rights groups to the UN to Washington DC, there's growing pressure on Myanmar to stop the violence against Rohingya, with an increasing number of US lawmakers demanding action. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson says his country holds Myanmar's military leadership accountable for what's happening in Rakhine State. In its latest report, Amnesty International is accusing Myanmar security forces of the systematic rape and murder of hundreds of Rohingya villages. Since August, almost 600,000 Rohingya have fled Myanmar for Bangladesh because of what the UN has described as a textbook case of ethnic cleansing. Well, the UN Human Rights Chief is threatening to seek the Security Council's intervention if the perpetrators aren't punished. Zaid Raad al Hussein spoke with Al Jazeera's Mike Hanna on Wednesday. The uh, attacks by the Arakan Salvation uh, Rohingya Army uh, was met by a very uh, methodical, well-planned, well-organized response that did not seem to us to be anything remotely like counterinsurgency, but a wholesale displacement of people from uh, northern Rakhine to uh, Cox Bazar in Bangladesh. And so it had all the hallmarks of uh, ethnic cleansing. Now, what monitors have made clear as well is that it's not just the enforced removal of people, it's also the destruction of their homes to prevent them from returning. I mean, the, the, the confirmation of this will come in two forms. One is how many they're willing to accept back. If it's only a trickle, then this confirms the ethnic cleans uh, cleansing hypothesis. Uh, and the second, of course, is that all of this would have to be confirmed when one day, surely those who uh, have uh, committed or perpetrated these uh, atrocities are hauled up before a court and answered to a judge uh, so that the victims can sense that uh, to a certain extent uh, justice will be served. And we in particular for many years have asked that uh, we not just have an office uh, in Yangon but that we be given uh, unfettered access to uh, northern Rakhine uh, whenever we feel and deem it necessary. And, and this uh, second part was not forthcoming when we made a, an explicit request uh, of Aung San Suu Kyi in October last year to send in investigators. At a time she was telling the international community that the military had completed its operation in the wake of that attack last year, satellite imagery made very clear that they had not. Yes, and, and uh, today uh, I received further information that what we're seeing uh, in uh, northern Rakhine is still continuing. What we have been seeing is still continuing. Reports of uh, extrajudicial killings, uh, reports of uh, the sexual abuses of the most terrific kind, of course, including rape. Uh, this is still ongoing, notwithstanding the uh, claim that uh, the military operations have largely wound down. This does not seem to be the case. but. Uh, the idea that this can, can be conducted with impunity, uh, I think, must be put behind us. And, uh, and then if the authorities in Myanmar are resistant, uh, then the Security Council should consider other measures, of course, to be applied. To other news now, the World Bank is promising billions of dollars to the Philippines to help rebuild the southern city of Marawi. The extent of the damage was visible on Thursday, two days after President Rodrigo Duterte declared it liberated after a five-month battle against ISIL-linked fighters. The Philippines will receive an estimated $2.9 billion to help with reconstruction. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres will travel to the Central African Republic next week to draw attention to what he calls the world's forgotten crisis. Violence is on the rise in the country which is split down religious and ethnic lines. Charlotte Bellis reports. Antonio Guterres draws attention as UN Secretary General and he's hoping his pull extends to the Central African Republic. My visit also aims to draw attention to a fragile situation that is often far from the media spotlight. Across the country, communal tensions are growing, violence is spreading, and humanitarian situation is deteriorating. A ceasefire ended civil war in CAR three years ago, but the violence never really stopped. The country is divided down religious and ethnic lines. More than one million people have either fled the country or been displaced in some CAR's new leader, Faustan Tuadera, told the United Nations General Assembly last month that his country still needs help. We need to remember the humanitarian situation, which has worsened in many parts of our country.
because of the upsurge of violence, because of ferocious competition for the control of natural resources. The UN wants to add 900 troops to the 12,000 strong peacekeeping force in CAR. The confidence in the UN's forces has been damaged by allegations of widespread sexual abuse. The Secretary General says his visit will show the UN is taking the issue seriously. During my visit, I will be accompanied by Jane Connors, who I appointed recently to serve as the organization's first victims' rights advocate. We are determined to ensure that the voices of victims are heard. I will myself be ready to meet with victims and their families. The sex abuse scandal means Guterres has to repair not just CAR, but the UN's reputation. Charlotte Ballas, Al Jazeera. Spain has warned it will suspend Catalonia's autonomy if the region's leader doesn't abandon his secession bid. Carles Puigdemont has until 8 GMT on Thursday morning to clarify his position. Nick Barker reports from Barcelona. Help Catalonia save Europe. Catalonia's independence movement's looking increasingly desperate. They're reaching out for help. It concerns to each and every European citizen. But slick campaign videos won't end the tense standoff with the Spanish government. Now, before it's too late. Earlier this week, more protests in Barcelona against the jailing of two independence leaders by a Spanish judge. The Catalan president, Carles Puigdemont, called them political prisoners. Last week, he unilaterally declared independence and simultaneously suspended it to allow for talks. But Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy says his government won't mediate with secessionists. He's given Puigdemont until Thursday morning to clarify and revoke any independence claim. If he doesn't back down, the Spanish government could take an unprecedented step and impose direct rule. Puigdemont and his entire government could be suspended or even jailed. This is high-stakes political brinkmanship, and Mr. Puigdemont seems ready to risk everything. He believes he's honouring the will of more than two million people that voted in favour of independence in a referendum that isn't recognised outside Catalonia. If the Madrid government decide to impose direct rule, the independence movement says the response will be seismic. I think it would be uh, tremendously unwise to uh, interfere in uh, Catalan autonomy because I know my country people and there will be an enormous response by most of the people in schools, in the television, in the media. Are we talking about people taking to the streets again en masse? Of course. We've been doing that for seven years. We've had millions of people going to the streets and we would have that again in protest, of course. But the Spanish government knows the region's divided. Some Catalans want secession now, others are hesitant, and large numbers hate the idea. He's risking his career. He's risking his liberty, his freedom. He's risking stability. I mean, our society, the Catalan society, I mean, is divided into two parts. And I think uh, if he goes further on, it will be a disaster. With time running out, Puigdemont has little option but to push for talks with Rajoy, weighing up the desire for independence against the possible loss of everything he and others here have spent years trying to achieve. Eve Barker, Al Jazeera, Barcelona. U.S. President Donald Trump is facing criticism over his handling of the deaths of four soldiers in Niger earlier this month. He's accused of making insensitive remarks during a phone call to the widow of one of them. A member of Congress says she heard Trump make the comments, but Trump says the story is fabricated. Kimberly Halkett reports from Washington, D.C. It's an unwritten rule of the U.S. presidency to act as the consoler in chief in times of grief. Outreach to the families of fallen soldiers has been a presidential role for Republican and Democratic presidents for decades. But it's a duty an increasing number of Americans say Donald Trump is not fulfilling. This Democratic congresswoman and longtime critic of the president is among them. She says she overheard Trump on Tuesday calling a newly widowed woman at the airport where she was receiving her husband's body. Sarcastically, he said, uh, but you know, he must have known what he signed up for. But how could you say that to a grieving widow? Army Sergeant LaDavid Johnson was one of four U.S. service members killed while on patrol in Niger earlier this month. 
Wilson and Officer Johnson's family say Trump's call was insensitive and disrespected the sergeant's sacrifice, a claim the president denies. I did not say what she said. I had a very nice conversation with the woman, with the wife, who is, sounded like a lovely woman. On social media, Trump said he had proof the congresswoman's statements were fabricated. The White House did not provide evidence, but did say despite the 12-day delay in reaching out, those present for the call confirmed the president followed protocol, and Trump's words were taken out of context. I think it is appalling uh, what the congresswoman has done and the way that she's politicized this issue and the way that she is trying to make this about something that it isn't. Uh, this was a president uh, who loves our country very much, who has the greatest level of respect for men and women in the uniform. Go! Still, Sanders didn't explain why the Trump administration has continued a policy of allowing hundreds of U.S. soldiers to train and advise in parts of West Africa, including Niger, known to be high risk. Johnson and three others were reportedly in an unarmored vehicle when they were ambushed. Families of soldiers killed in action are known as Gold Star Families in the United States. They are deeply respected and honored for their loved one's ultimate sacrifice, giving up their life for their country. Hey. Oh. That's why so many in the U.S. consider the president's latest political controversy a showing of poor taste and an apparent lack of compassion toward a grieving family when it was empathy that was needed most. Kimberly Helkin, Al Jazeera, Washington. Still ahead on the bulletin, at least four people are dead after clashes between police and protesters in Togo. And Iraq declares its mission against the Kurds in northern Iraq accomplished and turns its focus to the business of oil.